Well, we're three rounds in and there are only four unbeaten teams left in the Isuzu Ute A-League. And you're about to watch two of them. A moment of truth for both or still too early to call. There's been promising signs from the Wanderers, but things unraveled just a touch in the second half against Brisbane last week. Mark Rudan admitting the players were not at the levels the Wanderers expect. Which version of the red and black do we get this evening? The Jets along with City, the only two teams to have made the perfect start, albeit of course Newcastle had played one game less, but they left it late against Perth and Wellington had plenty of chances last week before departing back across the Tasman with their tails between their legs. So both teams eyeing top spot potentially tonight with Melbourne City not in action until Sunday. Second against third. But the big question, Daniel McBreen, will both be up there come season's end? Well, if you go by hist recent history, Simon. Excuse me. <laughs> frog in the throat just tried to escape on me. If you go by recent history, you would have to say no. But two new teams, new coaches, have both had time with these teams last season. And hopefully they've got that culture which both of them talk about. It's great strength there. Mike Cassini Yang it's been a feature of his game. Operating down that left-hand side in the early part of the campaign. He was outstanding against Melbourne victory in the first half at least a couple of weeks back. A little bit quieter against Brisbane. Yeah, he was. And we spoke to Marco Rodin about the consistency of performance, particularly of the younger players, and how they really manage that. So it's just a, it is literally consistency of the of the way you train. And he's got a big job on tonight against Carl Jenkinson, hugely experienced England international. It'll be quite interesting tonight. We've seen the first three games. Wanderers have been very steadfast in defence, very well organised. We know how much Arthur Pappas' team like to control the play and move the ball quickly. Renault Piscopo trying to do just that, but he was crowded out in midfield, but the Jets have come away with it. And it's James McGarry leading the charge. He scored after three minutes and 51 seconds last week, which is the quickest goal so far this season. Not quite able to find a way through. Brandon O'Neill. Quite sit for O'Neill, therefore he was unable to ferry it out towards the right-hand side. Where Trent Mahaja was stationed. Newcastle Jets have never actually won at the refurbished Combank Stadium. Four trips, three draws and one defeat. Normally pretty tight affairs, these games. Advantage played. Floated it towards Yangi in the box, might drop here for Kripic. And Natter got his body in the roads, well defended in the end. A chance though for the Wanderers. Well, he did wear, uh, well there, Natter. Kripic, when he took the touch, well, the chance was gone as Natter got into cover and block. Here come the Wanderers again, Borello. Trying to slalom his way through a whole load of traffic. Back through Merchula. Malfatado. Block by Piscopo. Here's that chance again. Well, it was good play originally here from Borello, but as the ball came through to the other side, it was Yangi that made the run in behind. It's a lovely ball. <laughs> Further back by Neuenhoff for Marcelo. <laughs> Amalfitano. Floats it nicely into the path of Suleiman Kripic, who forces the first real save off Michael Weir. However, the Bosnian had drifted offside, so it won't be a corner. Well, we spoke in the pre-game about his movement to and then away. And I'll tell you what, he's not offside. And I'm glad that didn't go in the back of the net. <laughs> the VAR would have had to overturn it, but he timed that to perfection again. Looks like he wants to come short and then spins in behind. Yerma. Leaving it for O'Neill. Bahaja on the right. And it's going to be a corner off Marcelo.
Hunter and Yerman about to make that move. Jenkinson at the back post as well. Make that three corners in a row. That was that man again, wasn't it? He wasn't taking any chances. Thomas coming in behind him. Work short this time. Becker, that's Melia. Useful centre again, and they'll pop out here for Angus Thurgang to drive it. Didn't quite have the direction. Well, he didn't quite catch it like he would have liked, but he had two or three teammates. If any one of them got a touch, it could have gone anywhere towards goal. You see legs everywhere. Scored the winner in the 1 0 victory at McDonald Jones Stadium back in February against the Wanderers, Angus Thurgang. She has three in nine games against the Red and Black, which uh, is his best return against any A-League outfit. Gone out before Yenge could reach it. All the way back by Thurgate. Oh, an error by Angus Thurgate, the Wanderers are onto it, it's Borello, and he thumps it back off the uprights. Closest we've come to a goal, and it came from a mistake from Angus Thurgate. Brenda Borello denied by the woodwork. A thumping strike in the end from Borello, but it came from an, an errant pass from Angus Thurgate looking to play Matter, but it comes off the side of the foot and Borello moved it on that outside and thunders it against the post. One very relieved Newcastle Jets midfielder. Merchela. Borello went first time. German. Jenkinson. That's many went first time. Try all right in the way. Now Ewan Hoff for the Wanderers. Nikovic. They to one challenge. Slips it through. Callum Ewan Hoff. They've hit the post again. Still alive for Borello. Roman Amalfitano for Western Sydney Wanderers. They would not be denied. And the Frenchman has his first goal in red and black in the final minutes of the first half. Well, Simon, you asked me the worth of Milos Ninkovic, and there it is. He started that, he opened up the defence. First touch here on the Harvey Norman replay, beats one, and it's that little pass there. Newenhoff should have put it away, but hits the post, and as it comes back out, you think it's maybe done, and it's unfortunate, but as the shot comes in, Natter deflects it into his own net. And at that moment there, you thought, maybe it's gone, and you see Natter just puts the head out, and all he can do is glance it past Michael Weir. Well, that was the touch. That wrong-footed Michael Weir. I'm sure Roman Amalfitano will try and claim that one. 100%. <laughs> they had struck the post, of course, the Wanderers through Brandon Borello before that. And Michael Weir's, of course, the big test of the Wanderers, and one they weren't quite able to pass last week was to go on with it in the second half. They fell in a bit of a hole, second 45 against Brisbane, and Marco Redan will be anxious to avoid a repeat. Yeah, without a doubt, I'm sure he'll remind them that the standards weren't good enough last week, and as he said earlier, Ben Stolters, it was a morgue, the training. So they'll know, they'll be fully aware of their performance last week. A morgue and a funeral. Yeah, both. <laughs> Miserable place, the Wanderers dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 
There's still time for one more Jets attack before the break. They're going to have to be quick. Glance at the watch from Sean Evans. And that will do for a first half that has been a real arm wrestle. But it was Milos Nikovic who lit up proceedings with that little threaded ball through. Callum Neuenhoff couldn't quite finish. It came back off the uprights. And Roman Amalfitano was there on the follow-up with a little help via a deflection off Mark Natter to put the Wanderers a goal to the good. Before that, Brandon Borello had hit the post, but chances on the whole, pretty few and far between for both teams. The Wanderers with their noses in front at the break. Can they go on with it and go to the top of the A-League ladder tonight? At the break, Wanderers won, Jets nil. Newcastle made a change at the break. Last year's top scorer with 13 goals. Becca Mikkel Tadza, who missed out against Wellington last week through injury, is on in place of Trent Mahaja. So a little bit of a change for Arthur Pappas. A bit more of a focal point in attack. You'd imagine Soterio and Piscopo to look to provide the bullets out wide. And let's be honest, the Jets Need to load the chamber a little bit more than they did in the first half when they managed just one rather tame shot on target, Daniel McBreen. Yeah, well, we mentioned that they didn't really use the pace of Bahaja and Soterio in that first half, so obviously Arthur Pappas has said, well, we need to change that up. And we see Renault Piscopo coming out onto this left-hand side, and we know he likes to come inside as well and act as a second ten, so maybe can create an overload in those areas to really trouble that in the back of Neuenhoff and Amalfitano. Oh dear, Sean Evans has cleaned up the goal scorer. Well, that Amalfitano. Now that is a foul. Yellow <laughs> card, ball, yellow referee. Card. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a replay of that. Meantime, the Jets are able to make further progress through Piscopo on the left. And that's a foul. <laughs> to Malfitano again. There we go. Come on, Sean. That's a blatant body check. <laughs> he hasn't missed him, has he? And he's a big fella as well, Sean Evans. That's becoming a habit now with these referees, isn't it? Yeah, starting to get a little bit of their own back. Try all right. mentioned that big turnover and of course it's the same for the Wanderers it does take time doesn't it to gel to understand each other to find those rhythms Natter Piscopo working it out for Soterio now Jenkinson it towards Mikkel Tatsy, who climbed well. Just couldn't get enough contact off the noggin. And that's the sort of service he requires. Yeah, and that's the danger of the, the man. He's great in that penalty box area. It's a lovely ball in across the six yard area. And you see Mikkel Tatsy got up early there, really straining the neck muscles to get power behind the ball, but just couldn't guide it on target. Ninkovic is clever. Such great awareness of where his teammates are. Kler driving through the heart of midfield. Wide right is Borello, promising this for the Wanderers. Still Brandon Borello trying to bend it, he's done it! It's 2-0! He has his first A-League men's goal in five years. Hit the post in the first half. Not going to be denied this time. Wanderers two to the good. Well, Brandon Barillo tonight has not taken a step backwards when faced with defence. The Harvey Norman remote play shows he picks up the ball, one-on-one -on -one here, and his first thought is to take him on. Comes inside, whips it with the left foot, and it takes a bounce just in front of Michael Weir, which maybe skips the ball away from him. And I think Michael Weir would have done a little bit better there, but Brandon Barillo, only one thing on his mind, 
comes inside, assesses the situation and finds that bottom corner. And just the start that Marco Redan would have wanted in this second half. Well, Michael Weir will be disappointed to be beaten by that. Brandon Borello won't care. It's his first goal in the competition since he scored for Brisbane against Wellington back in April 2017. And for the first time this season, the Wanderers score more than one goal in a game. Is that enough of a cushion to take them to the top of the league tonight? Given away by James McGarry rather carelessly. Wanderers' next two fixtures before the World Cup break. They've got the Mariners at Combank and then the big Sydney Derby on the 12th of November. So no travel involved. They can secure the three points here. Their season will be building really nicely. Here's the cross for the Jets' chance. What a save, Thomas, to deny Reno Piscopo one-handed. Back in by McGarry, and Marcelo nods it away. That is a top draw save from Lawrence Thomas to preserve the two-goal cushion. Well, you said, man, in the moment, that was a huge moment. Free header, eight yards out, Lawrence Thomas with a great save. Keeping the two-goal two goal cushion. And the first real save in anger he's had to make. He had one routine gather from Soterio in the first half, and the Jets are going to push on now. And you can see Lawrence Thomas there saying to his team, calm down. Rene Piscopo really should be scoring there, but it's a fine save. And he knows what a moment that is as well. Look at the celebration from Lawrence Thomas. <laughs> it's almost like a striker scoring a goal, isn't it? Yes! And they have Newcastle Jets turned it up a little bit in these last few minutes. I think Lawrence Thomas has realised that. He's just telling his team, let's calm down. Let's not get caught up in it. Let's not sit in and invite them on top of us. Well, now they've got a chance to spring forward on the counter. It's Cassini Yengi. Newcastle committed numbers forward. Still Yengi. Got all wrapped up in the end by Brandon O'Neill. I can tell you that Danny McBree took a tumble off his chair <laughs> during that last action. Here's a chance for Suleiman Krippich. And it's away for a corner off Natter. You OK, Macca? Well, the action's heating up all of a sudden. I fell off the chair in excitement. Oh, Cassini Yengi had what a, what a great opportunity. He had runners on the outside. He also had Matt Yeoman squared up, and I thought he could have used his pace and gone on the outside. Changes of foot for Newcastle, we are told. Coming up to date, those in a moment. Jason Hoffman and Daniel Steins have been summoned. Play, they'll make those changes. Brandon O'Neill. Throw in Jets. Thurgate. Through they've built the hands, the Jets. Strong work by Newenhoff, but loose ball has favoured Newcastle and Jenkinson in particular. Darts are trying to link up with his compatriot, Michael Tadze, left it a touch short, and the Wanderers will carry it clear through Brandon Borello, who ignores, ignores Clare on the right. He's done well. Here's Cassini Yangi. Oh dear. Just got right underneath it, Yangi. What a chance to finish the game off for the Wanderers. Oh dear, indeed. It was a fantastic run. So we see the changes now. 
James McGarry and Reno Piscopo, we're told, are the two. There we go. To be replaced, Jason Hoffman and Daniel Steins to be introduced. It was a great run from Brandon Barello. He's having a wonderful night. And as he just laid that ball there, just was a little behind and maybe a, I'll be kind and say a little bobble there for Yangi as well. Just got it all wrong. Still early days, Macca, but you like what you're seeing from Western Sydney? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Recruited well. Marcelo is captain. You can see why he's captain. A true leader on and off the park. Minkovic giving plenty of time. Neuenhoff, one that wasn't really spoken about before the season started, has really excelled. And really only by chance, Oliver Bazanic out injured and he's really making a claim for that spot in midfield. Yeti and Makoto still to come back as well. They don't create an awful lot Western Sydney Wanderers. But they certainly don't concede too many chances at the other end. Michael Weir out to claim that one. Before the game started, Tommy Merchill has said that Mark Overdan had spoken to them about the Jets. They don't create many, but they're ruthless. Well, they've turned the tables. Two shots on targets, two goals, and it looks like being a 2 0 win. Central Coast Mariners come calling next to Combank. Brandon Barella literally out on his feet. Maybe a last chance to get on the board for Newcastle. No way through, though, for Timmins. And the Wanderers finishing the game as they started. Dominant fashion. Here's Borello. Zach Sapsford to head for the corner and run down the clock. Jobbed up for Marco Rudan. His team are going to be top of the shop as of now. Very solid, very professional, very clinical. Two chances, two goals scored, a 2-0 win for the Wanderers, who are back to winning ways as they end Newcastle's perfect start to the campaign. It is still early, of course, but the Red and Blacks starting to believe they are top of the A-League tonight for the first time in two years, with two games in Sydney to come before the World Cup break. The Jets disappointing tonight. They struggle to create opportunities. Amalfitano and Borello with the ones that mattered for Western Sydney. Full time at Combeck. Western Sydney Wanderers 2, Newcastle Jets 0.